tell me who you are, what you've written, and um, we'll start with Naomi because you're next on the screen for me. If that's okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, hi, I'm Naomi Gibson and I'm the author of Every Line of You. It's a YA thriller that came out in August and it's about a very lonely girl who creates her own AI to love her. Um, Kat next, shall we? Hi, I'm Kat Ellis. I've written a few books by this point. Um, the most recent one is Wicked Little Deeds, which just came out in August and it's a ghostly murder mystery about a girl who gets tangled up in a murder investigation when bodies start showing up around town with their eyes gouged out. It's so good. So creepy, but so good. <laughs> Thank you. And Holly, what about you? Uh, hello, I'm Holly Race. I have written Midnight's Twins and its sequel, A Gathering Midnight. They're um, urban fantasy and they're set between this world and the world we go to when we dream. And the um, the kind of premise is that when we dream, we, we go to an alternative universe and if we die in our dreams, then we die in the real world as well. And my um, the twins of my of my books are uh, recruited into a secret army who protect dreamers from their nightmares and in the process uncover something that um, happened to their mum 15 years ago and uh, someone who may be trying to control people's minds through their dreams. All brilliant books, I love them all. Um, I suppose the first question um, would be why you all decided to write for YA versus adult or younger children. Um, I always think that that's a really interesting thing to find out. Um, shall we start with Holly this time and go the other way around? <laughs> and you can do. I don't really, I don't, not sure that it was ever really like a, a concrete decision when I started writing. I've always really enjoyed reading YA. I think there's something about the paciness of them and like the focus and um find the characters really interesting and they're usually quite dramatic um that I really really enjoy reading and so um when it came to writing it, it just kind of ended up being a, a teenage uh lead character which automatically tends to mean YA um and went from there so yeah it wasn't really a conscious decision as such I was just writing what I would like to read. That's great because I think I do agree with you that YA characters tend to be some of the most kind of interesting in the book world and I think that's a lot to do with kind of their ages. I mean character arcs if you're going to have development over kind of starting in your teens and going onwards is kind of the time in life anywhere where anyway where they're kind of you you change and you evolve most and I think that that comes across in YA books so well um so I totally get that what about you Kat? Uh well similarly to what you and Holly have just said I I started writing YA because that's what I absolutely love to read I went through a massive reading slump after I finished university where I didn't read anything for a few years like nothing <laughs> because I'd uh, been reading a lot of classics and it was Daniel Deronda that book that did me in I couldn't read anything after that book for so many years <laughs> but then it was YA that drew me back in it was like my my revival uh, my love of reading just came back when I started reading YA so it was natural for me to want to tell those stories because they were just what captured my imagination and like you were saying I I think YA it focuses on the 16, 17, 18 year old sort of age group. And that's such a, a crossroads point in anybody's life because you're making such massive decisions about what you want your life to be as an adult after that point. So, you know, it's, it's the point where you can make major decisions about your life, but also where you don't have the, the you know, really horrible little responsibilities like paying mortgages and stuff. So, <laughs> so it's a nice time to write about, I think. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I definitely, as much as I love my life, there is something great about being kind of 
the 17 to kind of like 18 where like you're making your decisions and it's full of these kind of like dreams and hopes and what can happen but without the kind of like harsh realities of being an adult as well it's the exciting adult decisions that you get to make like where you want to go and what you want to do more than the um how are you gonna get a mortgage or you know exactly <laughs> any of those other things <laughs> how about you now um yeah i think similarly to what what's already been said i think i'm just drawn to ya as a genre as a category sorry it's not genre it's a category um just because it's it's got that pacingness to it that I, I I don't think you find. I think a lot of the time you get an adult book, and this isn't all the time, but sometimes, and it's so much thicker as a book and you're expected to sit through it because you're an adult now and you have patience. And I think sometimes I'm just like, screw that. <laughs> give, me, <laughs> give me the slim book that I can race through in an hour. Do you know what I mean? And I think I'm just drawn to those kind of stories um, and the protagonists that, yeah, they're still sort of making those life-changing decisions and working out who they are and as characters you know you get a lot of leeway with that um so you can make a bad decision but you can still have your reader on your side because you're still learning you know you're still a teenager um and I like that kind of buy-in as well which is a lot easier because I think as an, if you're writing an adult character who makes a bad decision you're almost expected to know better do you know what I mean whereas the, the teenager might not and that's okay and I think yeah you just get there's just a lot more wiggle room to create more morally grey characters. That's what I'm all about. So, <laughs> yeah. I love a morally grey character. There's yeah. nothing better. They just like, they do, they do things wrong and you can't help but still be 100% behind them no matter what they've done. <laughs> and you know that it's not necessarily because they're a bad person that they've done the bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I definitely think morally great characters are some of my favorites <laughs> I have to admit um so obviously you all help run the UK YA um network group Instagram um so I was wondering why you decided to kind of start it and what the kind of defining moment for that was if there was one <laughs> Do you um, I take that one to begin with? Yeah. Um, so it was it was actually quite a selfish motivation on my part in that um, <laughs> last year I just published Midnight Spins had just come out and I you know it was kind of locked down and didn't I I have a I have some very good friends none of them are, are really writers or weren't at the time and I was feeling a bit lonely and kind of like oh this is quite a weird journey to be on and I would quite like to talk to some other YA writers about that and so uh, I kind of asked around a little bit uh, on like Twitter DMs was like is there is there like a support group or anything and people were a bit like I, I don't think so I was like well shall I make one <laughs> um, and so it yeah it just started off as like a private Facebook group basically for um, the UK and Ireland based uh, YA authors um, and uh, invited some people, went from there and started the Twitter account and then Kat uh, came here and was like, how about we do Instagram as well? I was like, sure, I'm not going to do any of this work, it's all on you. <laughs> so I'd probably better hand over to Kat and Naomi because they do most of the <laughs> public facing stuff. Well, I'll no, pick up from that point. First, our cat. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I was I was very excited when uh, Holly asked me, you know, to come on board and help out a bit with the, uh, the Twitter stuff, and I thought, yes, brilliant, we can start an Instagram account as well because it makes sense to me to just do, you know, all the social media bases, and because I've always wanted to do more like Bookstagrammy stuff on my own Instagram account, but it doesn't always fit because you have to do. A certain amount of your own stuff on there so if you're always shouting about other people's books it looks a little bit odd I think sometimes for an author account to do that mm -hmm. so it was nice to have the UKYA books account where I could just do like spotlights and shout about um, all kinds of book news and events and things like that and it 
it has no agenda to it other than just was from across the UK and Ireland. So it was nice to have that kind of pressure free, agenda free space to just shout about books that are are amazing and I think more people should read. There's some incredible recommendations on that page, I must say. Like some of them are just blow my mind like that I haven't seen or heard of and have then read and like have fully broken broken me emotionally <laughs> or <laughs> some of the rides that I've been on lately with kind of YA books I don't know how my emotions are still intact because they're just whoo <laughs> but how about um you Naomi well so it's quite funny because I think about six months ago, I got tagged by this account, UKYA. They were like, <laughs> doing a reel. <laughs> and I was like, oh, right, thanks. And, um, and then Kat was like, oh, it's me, it's Kat. If you want to help out, you can. It's me and Holly running it. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'd like to help out. So <laughs> I'm basically just the third wheel on it all. And um, I got a, a Canva. I got, um, I got associated with Canva and started doing, I don't know, posts with, with that, really. And I don't know, it just kind of took off. But, um, yeah, it's definitely um, Holly and Kat's brainchild. And I'm just... <laughs> along for the ride <laughs> i really like getting uh dms on instagram from from cat and amy going like i'm going to do something that's along the theme of like beach any thoughts any books you want to throw in there it's like okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go to the just let me go to my bookshelves <laughs> <laughs> no i think the whole it's it's amazing to see kind of or like especially because it's like you as authors taking charge which like I salute you like it's an incredible kind of community and even not just authors kind of like YA readers that are getting involved and kind of like chatting about it as well has been like incredible to see um so I guess that leads on to the next question which is um obviously we're doing this UK YA of the week. Um, why do you think that kind of like what UK YA kind of needs its own place? I have my own views on that, but I'd love to know if they were similar for you. Kat, do you want to go first? Sure. I mean, I think all the work that you're putting into this UK YA authors week is just absolutely amazing, and it is oh, so God. nice. Hi. <laughs> you made me cry on camera and that's never a good laugh. No, it's just absolutely brilliant I think so so needed and timely because it's helping to raise the profile of UK YA books which sometimes maybe get a little bit overshadowed by the bigger books that are coming over with the big marketing budgets from the US so it's so nice to see you know spotlights being put on authors homegrown authors bringing out you know really interesting books that maybe some readers just don't get to hear about because they can't go out and like actively look for these things so it's really really good that you're just sharing the the good news yeah, definitely. <laughs> <I'm okay>. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i suppose i obviously ya is my favorite age range to kind of read from and I know from kind of a reader's perspective kind of outside of the shop and everything that you do like YA has done amazingly in this kind of last year in the UK like sales wise mm -hmm. and I think that has a lot to do with kind of social media especially and the marketing that goes on in there on like TikTok and Instagram and everything but I do feel like obviously some of the other titles from outside of the UK just have such big budgets that you hear about kind of them a lot and it'll be multiple posts kind of following up your feed and you, you just don't see some of the books that come out what kind of like, as you said, like from homegrown authors. Yeah. And I think it's really important even when it comes to kind of like setting and kind of community like reading a book that's set in the UK for example just hits different because it's 
easier to kind of place yourself in the narrative almost yeah. and kind of get that so that's kind of why where the idea came from and then everyone has said yes Yay. <laughs> which is brilliant and I never imagined would happen <laughs> when I was just sat on my phone being like do you think it would be a good idea if we did like this like would it would anybody be interested um, so I'm really glad that kind of people seem to think it's a good idea. Not that I still question myself, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So we have one of the segments I am most excited for. Um, so for people watching that don't know, I run a YA book club in store. I also run one online, but the one in store is incredible, as are the online ones. Um, but the in store book club have come up with a series of questions for you to all answer. And I'm very excited. They were very excited to write all of these questions. I've never seen them so quiet <laughs> in my life. <laughs> <laughs> they're all just sat there writing away for like a good 30 minutes and I was like oh silence <laughs> it was it was amazing to see um but I think it again highlights the kind of the need for kind of like connecting with authors especially mm -hmm. UK ones to kind of inspire the kind of younger generation to kind of like get involved with things whether it be books or not it's just great for them to be able to take part in things so their first question is really simple one um <laughs> and that is what motivates you and why do you write so Naomi do you want to go first on that one sure uh what motivates me um I'm quite goal orientated um, as a person and I like to achieve things and then um, I wanted I wrote a book and I was like I'm gonna get published I'm gonna get an agent and then I went on this long long rabbit hole of trying to get an agent and getting 50 rejections <laughs> before one finally said yes <laughs> um, but yeah I am quite goal orientated and um, I do want to achieve lots um, with books and you know that's kind of why I, I, I do it um, but also the stories um what inspires me in the story is like um I think I'm just quite nosy like I love um analyzing people like all of my books have got this like psychological edge to them because I just think people are just so fascinating and the way they uh, make decisions and like maybe things that have happened to them as a child that have gone on to inform decisions later in life and then like working out what can push that character to their own individual edge and make them snap you know I'm a bit mean as an author really <laughs> but, um, that's kind of what um, inspires me yeah <laughs> um how about you Kat well, <laughs> I have jokingly in the past said that I write books to traumatise teenagers. Um, that isn't why I yeah. write what I write. <laughs> but I do write quite scary or at least creepy books um, purely because I like to entertain. I mean, it's all about the story for me. I'm not somebody who writes books that I think will change the world. I mean, my books aren't going to, you know, start riots. They're not going to, you know, inspire any great cultural change I don't think and there are books that will and are important I write purely to entertain and that is that's the only reason that I write what I write because I want people to read them and be like yes that was a good story so mm. that's it for me you, you definitely manage that and I think writing just for kind of joy and the enjoyment of having other people kind of just be entertained is really important um and your books definitely do that but they are very creepy i will <laughs> <laughs> how about you holly um well i started by saying cat doesn't write just traumatize 
younger readers, adults. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Harrow Lake has not left my psyche. <laughs> um, I, I think there are three things that motivate me to write. One is um, what ifs. I love a good what if and um, mm. constantly kind of thinking, oh, what if this happened? Or in Midnight's Twins case, what if dreams were actually real and could actually kill us? Um, then the other one is, um, I, I have quite strong political feminist opinions sometimes, but I'm not very good at articulating them in, uh, like spoken debate. Um, so I think I try and put them in my writing as like a written scream of rage, uh, against <laughs> things that I see going on in the world and my country that make me really angry, but I can't quite say it out loud. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that's that's my second one. And then the third one is just spite. Um, <laughs> all the people who were like, yeah, I don't think Holly's gonna mount to March. You told me that they didn't think I was very good at what I wanted to do. Just proving them wrong. That is a great <laughs> motivation. <laughs> just be completely honest here. <laughs> I think that may be the best answer I've ever heard for that question. <laughs> <laughs> a grudge. <laughs> you just have proved what people you know? wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, the Another question they, was asked, they asked was, how do you plan your books? We have a few aspiring writers who love to kind of write, and I think they're looking for top tips um shall we start with holly this time sure um so i i have a little post-it note system which um i i learned online i'll show you one that i've got for sorry you're seeing my very untidy office now <laughs> that's for the the book that i'm writing at the moment um and so i put different kind of plot points on um, different colored post-it notes depending on which like story thread they are and it kind of because they're on post-it notes I can like rip things off if they're not working and try lots of things out without it being in a notebook where you're like oh I'm committed now I'm gonna have to <laughs> start the page again if I want to change anything um, so yeah I have that and then I also give myself the freedom to go completely um, off plan if as I'm writing like oh actually that thing is much better alternative to what's on my post-it notes. I think that's quite important because it keeps you being spontaneous or it keeps me being spontaneous anyway. That's incredible. I would definitely need post-it notes because I'm not very good at ever notebooks and me don't really get along in the kind of organization planning out regard so that's a very good idea that i might have to adopt for my design work um rather than trying to use a notebook <laughs> how about you naomi i'm pointing but you can't see who's on the screen so I should really stop. um for me i um i like to start off with a character i don't really plan my plot out point by point um the post-it notes look amazing but that's too much for me i can't handle that <laughs> um, i i like to just plan my character i like to know them inside out um i like to know what they want what they fear the most and then i go into my story um with my character and i follow my character around um and basically that means that um I end up doing a lot of rewriting <laughs> because my plot might not be together, but at least I know my character. But so yeah, um, the, the book that, um, this one, Every Line of You, I, I wrote my very first draft very quickly. I, I wrote it in, in two weeks um, and then I rewrote it about seven or eight times. Um, so, you know, it, it probably took me longer <laughs> overall but you know that's just the way I like to, to do it so yeah character comes first for me and then plot second but, <laughs> but that's that's super because I think you can you can really tell in your book that like it the decisions the character's making are the characters if that makes sense mm -hmm. it 
totally makes sense to the like even though some of the things in that book <laughs> oh, <laughs> they totally make sense and that so it's quite interesting to know that that's kind of mm. the way you work oh thanks Charlie. that's mm. nice feedback <laughs> How about you, Kat? I know we've spoke before and you sometimes change things up and have different ways of planning depending on the book. I do, yeah. I, I started out trying to be very methodical about it, kind of beat shooting, save the cat type, planning it out and found that that felt to me like once I had all my bullet points very neatly laid out, like I'd already written it and there was no sort of joy then in creating this book because I felt like you know I'm rewriting something so yeah it, it changes with each book for me my method of writing at the moment I'm doing something quite similar to Holly's where I've got uh, facing me now just big sheets of poster paper on the wall with post-it notes that have got like outlining my plots which I've changed several several times I've got notes on character in different sections um, backstory just like names for things that I know I'm going to forget as I've reached the end of the book and I need to refer back to a character I mentioned once in chapter four mm -hmm. so yeah I mean I've got all kinds of stuff that I find the visual helps to have it there in front of me because I'm very forgetful generally um but I unlike Naomi I start with setting first when I'm coming up with story ideas I tend to have an, a really good idea of the place that I want to set things and I think maybe that's because of the type of stories that I write they're so creepy and you need that atmosphere so I think the setting just plays so strongly into that so my setting comes first then I tend to think okay what sort of people would live in this horrible place <laughs> and then after that what terrible things can I do to them so <laughs> there you know we end up with with setting and characters and then eventually a plot um, it all kind of changes. It's all sort of fluid as I'm writing. Um, but yeah, I start with the setting and I find that, that that works best for me. And it's the one thing that seems to stay quite static with each book now. Yeah, the atmosphere is definitely key yeah. to your book. So I can understand totally oh. that it was kind of like <laughs> the setting. Um, not that I have to read any of your books with the lights on. Um, <laughs> well, it's better for your eyes to read with the light on anyway. <laughs> I don't need the lamp. I need the full ceiling light, the lamp, um, the door shut just in case, you know. You never know when you're reading one of your books what might appear in the room sometimes. Sometimes I like when I was reading um, Wicked Little Deeds, there were a couple of times where I was reading and I swear I could see something like just out of the corner oh, yeah. of my eye. Um, <laughs> so that led to me having to have like the door shut as well as all available lighting um, and the curtains closed um, because I think birds were flying past the window and I was sure that it was something far more terrifying than, you know, just like a pigeon. <laughs> Well, I can only apologise. <laughs> you apologise, but you don't really mean it. I, I really don't. <laughs> um, so the kind of the next questions we have are, do you have a certain way of writing and how do you manage to fit writing in? Do you have a certain schedule that you sit, stick to or is it a case of you write as inspiration hits kind of thing? Um, yeah. Uh, who shall we start with this time? Let's go with Holly. Okay. Um, I, I, I fit writing in by the fact that I, um, I am self-employed. So I, I have another job, but it's, I'm my own boss. Um, so I can kind of pick and choose how many hours I do of that. Um, and I fit that in around my editing schedule. Um, I try, I'm not always successful, to get up very, very early every weekday at like 5.30 and get a couple of hours work done first thing before my daughter gets up. She's quite young and sometimes she wakes up in a bad mood and if she wakes up in a bad mood and that's like my first interaction of the day, then it kind of puts my head in a really weird space where I can't like 
get down as easily to writing as I might like and as I might need to do. So if I've got two hours of writing done before the world wakes up and before the emails started to come in and before she started to cry, then um, it just kind of puts me in a really good place for the rest of the day. Um, and then I find that I'm able to usually do a lot more um, for the rest of that morning. I usually can't write for more than four or five hours, I would say each day. Although if there's a deadline approaching, then I have been known to pull all, an all-nighter. Um, but I would really rather not do that if I possibly can, because it's very painful. <laughs> they are very painful. I do not miss trying to meet deadlines like that and pulling all-nighters. It's not something I've ever been very good at, but I know... I've got to the point in my life now where if I tried to pull an all night, uh, it would be <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Earlier we were saying how, um, how that kind of age range, the YA age range of like 16 to 18, that they, they have a really, in, they're at a really interesting kind of crossroads. I also feel like for my genre, for fantasy, it's absolutely the best age range for someone to save the world because... Mm -hmm. I, we, I don't know if you see all the memes about, you know, uh, Katniss Everdeen and all these teenagers being the ones who are leading the rebellion. It's like, absolutely, they have the energy. Yeah. Have <laughs> the the rest of us don't. I am, I'm done by like <laughs> seven o'clock at night. <laughs> it needs someone young. I like, definitely yeah, you agree. Power until dawn. <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree with that. Like, obviously... I love fantasy, but it has got to the point where I'm like, how are these people like managing to do this? Like, have they slept yet? I don't think they have. <laughs> <It's mean. laughs> That's how they do it. It's amazing. It's I know. <laughs> not that I am. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Not that I am um, kind of, uh, oh, what would you call it? Oh, I've lost my words. Jealous. Jealous. Not that I'm jealous of that <laughs> age range and all of their energy, but also I kind of am. <laughs> I don't know how I used to do the amount of stuff I did in one day. Um, so, yeah, I totally get why <laughs> that works. How about you, Kat? Um. I, I think I'm on a very different sort of schedule to Holly. Um, I'm a night owl, very much a night owl, which isn't to say that I have any more energy, but just that I start later. <laughs> I'm useless in the morning. And I think this is just my, my internal clocks rebellion against the fact that I used to work an office job for many, many, many years. So I was always in the office by eight o'clock. And I think it's just that rebellion now that I don't have to do that. I don't even start writing until after lunch and then I'll work until like 11, 12 at night. So it's just a different schedule, but probably the same number of hours. Um, and it gets longer than that if I'm on deadline, but you know, <laughs> the books get written somehow. I'm definitely more of a night person than a morning person. Half five in the morning, Holly. Sounds it's very painful sounds incredible I don't think mm, there's something like dark skies at night fine <laughs> waking up when it's still dark not fine <laughs> I'm with you <laughs> yeah how about um you Naomi um yeah I I'm funny I used to be a night owl and I've gone completely the other way I'm now more of a morning bird but um I just I think for me I find that like um my brain ticks over it whilst I'm asleep. And then when, if I get up and I write straight away, that's often the best work I'll do. Um, so yeah, I think for me, the morning works best for me. Um, and I work full time. So like Holly, I, I get up early um, and I write before I work, though I'm not quite as early as 5.30. <laughs> if, I, if I see eight o'clock, that's a pretty good go for me, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I, I write um, for an hour before work. Um, and at the moment, I am on a deadline. Um, so I'm writing all the time at the weekends. And pretty much um, as soon as I finish work, I'm, I'm back on the laptop. So if I'm drafting and I'm not on a deadline, I'm just doing it for fun. 
um, then I'll just write in the mornings and maybe at weekends, but on a deadline I write around work pretty much, so. Mm -hmm. So this was a question, ne this next question was asked and written down by every single member of the book club. Um, and that is, are any of your books um, based on personal experience or anyone that you know? Now, obviously, legally, you don't have to tell us <laughs> if they're based on any particular person, um, but I think they're just kind of really excited and interested in how much your inspiration comes from kind of like the world around you. Mm -hmm. Um, who shall we start with? Cat. So I, you know, for legal reasons, I do not base any of my characters on anybody <laughs> I know in real life. <laughs> Disclaimer language there. Yeah. Um, but I do base some of the, the places or the landmarks that I put into my stories on places that are in my surrounding area. Um, even though my stories tend to be set in the United States, I use like ruins and you know creepy trees like the bone tree from Harrow Lake was sort of based on one that is near me and I quite often walk past it so yeah I, I use like little geographical bits and pieces from my real life that I put into my books other than that though the only other thing that is based on my my real life experiences are the things that I find scary I tend to put those into my books as well like there's quite often uh, claustrophobic scenes in there because I, I hate small confined spaces. So if you read my books, you'll notice there's like one, at least one scene in each one, which is really claustrophobic. Um, the character Mr. Jitters was kind of inspired by a sleep paralysis dream that I had where I, I saw this like creepy figure, like a demonic figure, just looking at me from the edge of the bed and just like creeping around the edge of it and I couldn't move. So yeah, my sleep paralysis dreams are quite a, a font of inspiration. <laughs> yeah, is that? <laughs> I suppose at least they're useful. <laughs> <laughs> How about um, you, Holly? Um, quite similar to Kat, actually, in, in a few respects. So my, uh, my books are mainly set in London, which is where I used to live. And I used to really love walking around London um like on a weekend when I had a dog I would walk her like a across see how many paths I could kind of patchwork how many um parks I could patchwork together on our walk and how far we could we could go together um so that a lot of that has come into the setting I would say of my books and I also have very vivid dreams and nightmares which was definitely a bit of an inspiration for the what if of the books. Um, as for characters, obviously for legal reasons, um, <laughs> no, no one's like a, a direct uh, lift, but I would say that my, my big bad is probably an amalgamation of a number of uh, fairly well-known people populist people um and i think if you read it you will absolutely know who <laughs> um, <laughs> i'll just leave it there <laughs> how about you know me so what we know holly is that you write out of spite <laughs> and you put people you don't like into your books <laughs> um Similarly, I put people I don't like into my book. Um, <laughs> there are a couple of characters um, who I've written who are absolutely based on people I've met. Um, people I came across at school who were like just complete bitches. You know, so be careful who you'll mean to you guys because one of them might be a writer. <laughs> um, but in terms of setting, um, my book... Uh, I made up a town uh, called Grenville because um, I wanted it to have very specific things in it and the places that I knew best didn't have those in them so I made up my town um, but the, the school that my main character goes to Lydia goes to um, is sort of I had one of my old high schools in mind when when I um, wrote about it 
Um, but yeah, I wanted a town to have it. Like I needed it to have a psychiatric hospital and basically, and so I just made up a town. Um, but yeah, I took inspiration from real life. <laughs> The next question is one that I think is amazing, and that is, if you could bring any character from your books to life, who would it be? Mm, let's start with Naomi. I'm still pointing. <laughs> <laughs> if I brought Lydia to life, she would probably try and rob me or lock me in a broom closet or something. <laughs> Um, and if I brought Henry to life, he would just sit and chat to me whilst casually hacking into everything and learning all about me digitally. So I'm a bit wary of bringing either of them. <laughs> uh, but it would probably be Henry because I think he would be the most fun. Um, he could buy me a house or something. <laughs> How about you, Kat? Oh, I love that answer. I love the idea of Henry just like stealing you a house somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a favour? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, being somebody who writes scary books, I'd obviously have to bring my villains to life. So <laughs> the jitters, dead-eyed Sadie. One of those two creeping around in the real world would be amazing. Oh, no. I've I've been on so many ghost hunts. I just think it would be amazing to see like dead-eyed Sadie in the corner of <laughs> you know, an old castle or something. So, yeah, you asked. Wait, wait, I am never turning my lights off. Everybody, yeah, like, it's okay, everyone. I know how to handle it. I've got. I I know this guy. Or, or would you just run away in terror? Do you think? <laughs> Oh gosh, I, I I would definitely be recording it and probably the first one killed. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the two curious ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Holly? <laughs> um, uh, going to be traumatized all over again tonight. Now, <laughs> um, I yeah, like Naomi, I'm not sure that I would necessarily want to bring. Fern, my my heroine to to life because she it's only at the start of the trilogy she's she doesn't really like anyone any other humans so she's not going to be great company um and her twin brother ollie is a bit of a bully so also probably not going to want him i think probably i would bring to life andraste who is um one of the fae because uh, the books are loosely based on Arthurian legend, she is kind of like warrior, queen, goddess character who's just incredibly kick-ass, basically. Um, so yeah, I think she'd be fun. She could take me on a good adventure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the next question is a very interesting one. Um, what was your favourite book as a child? Now, Kat, I am very interested <laughs> to know what your yeah. favourite book as a child yeah. was. <laughs> what, what messed me up as a child? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was, you know, a young child, it, I was just obsessed with Roald Dahl. And he had some quite twisted stories, really, when you look back and you sort of read them as an adult or... Uh, yeah, yeah, some quite weird and macabre things going on in Roald Dahl stories. When I was a teenager, though, I was absolutely obsessed with this series. I don't think it's still in print. It was called The Power by an author called Jesse Harris. And it was about this teen psychic girl who would like solve murders and crimes and things like that. It was all very spooky, supernatural. Uh, yeah, just real like, you know, adventures. And she had this amazing boyfriend called Aiden. So it just ticked all of my boxes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think, you know, reading quite spooky things when I was growing up probably did the damage there. <laughs> um, Holly, what about you? Um, I think I quite liked books that made me cry, um, that had a lot of part eight to them. So Watership Down was a big favorite um had you know that kind of rich lore then um the once and future king by th white was probably my the start of my love of arthurian legend but i think probably the sorry i'm looking up here because they're up here now um the one that 
probably got me the most was the ghost drum by susan price which i think cat would like there's it's quite scary if you haven't come across it cat i think i haven't i think yeah like i'll it. check that out um it's sort of based on russian folklore and it's terrifying it's about um a kind of good shaman a uh, good female shaman who rescues um, a prince from a tower and goes up against an evil shaman in the process. And yeah, it's quite violent. It's great. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Naomi? Uh, so I actually um, grew up without a TV. I didn't have a TV till I was about 12. Um, so a lot of my childhood was spent with... Um, in the library and getting books from the library and I so I don't really have like um a particular favorite book but there was one um shelf that I always went to in the library and that was um the fantasy section where Tamara Pierce's books were and she had this um quartet called the song of the lioness and it was about this girl who traded places with her twin brother and she wanted to go and be a knight and he wanted to go off and be a musician I believe and um, so she went off and trained to be a knight and disguised herself as um, a boy and grew up and then she sort of um her and the prince uh wow chicka wow wow styles <laughs> um, I, I think it's like a, a teen a young teen that was like really really cool um and then I was absolutely prime for Twilight um so I know Twilight gets like a lot of hate but I was 16 when it came out and yeah I, I was all over Edward like a bad rash um it was just <laughs> that was probably one of my favorite books that came out because I think up to that point like most of the books I had read um hadn't had like that contemporary setting like I don't think I think I read a lot of fantasy um and then I suddenly had this um book that was like set in a school and like you had this cool sort of paranormal boy um and it was just like I was like wow this is like so cool you know and it just Twilight got me really bad I had like posters and everything <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> I think Twilight was one for a lot of people like reading it back now is scary sometimes, but I think, I <laughs> yeah, don't. <laughs> but at that time, it just like, I think it ignited so many people to get back into reading as well. Mm -hmm. yes. um, for me, Roald Dahl was always a huge one when I was a kid as well. Um, and they are creepy, some of them, when you kind of look back with adult eyes. Mm. And then I always loved Inkheart and that trilogy because um, I think it was the first book that I read that was like about people loving books mm -hmm. and I just connected to the kind of like the magic of books and it kind of described how I felt about books so I think it's always stuck with me for that kind of reason. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last book club question is, have you always seen yourself as an author from when you were young or did you imagine that you was gonna be something else? Um, and if so, what, what, what job did you think you'd have when you grew up? Mm. No, yeah, you've grown up now. Um, <laughs> uh, let's start with Kat. I didn't think I was going to grow up and be an author. Uh, it never, ever occurred to me when I was a kid. And I think one of the reasons that was is because I never, ever met an author. We didn't used to get authors coming into my school talking to us. So it didn't really occur to me that authors were just regular people like me, you know, that I could write books when I was older and they'd be published and read by other people. But that's another reason why I think events like this are so important, because maybe it's making books more accessible to people who just haven't thought oh actually the UK is full of authors and I could be one of those one day mm. so so yeah it didn't really occur to me until I was about 25 I think I started writing about then and it was because I'd started reading YA all the big books like Twilight and you know all the the big YA boom books that were coming out around then mm. they just caught my imagination and hopefully Lots of the UK YA books that are coming out now will do the same for 
the next generation of teens? I think they definitely will. Um, being in charge of kind of like two YA book clubs, slightly different ages, and obviously talking to people in school, and the fascination that comes with um, not only like talking to people about books, but then realizing that the authors are in the UK and they're normal people and they're really nice and happy to chat and connect and all that kind of thing has been like incredible to watch some people like really get involved and kind of grow within that space that's kind of being created um, and there's also a lot of um, especially discussion on the um, the in Star Book Club on um, they're definitely if any of them can become writers they're definitely going to be thriller writers um, because <laughs> they have decided and designed a lot of ways to murder people since <laughs> reading Pat's book and Lee Jackson's <laughs> and everyone's there's there's some very interesting ways that have been discussed so um I definitely think they're thinking about the world and like different ways to do things because they know there's connections with authors now. Um, so I love that. that's great. That's cool. It's mildly terrifying sometimes because sometimes they're like, oh, Charlie, guess, guess what? Guess, guess what we could do? <laughs> and I'm like, come on now. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're, they're all lovely. Um, but seeing them kind of, communicate the ideas as well is just like incredible to kind of watch um how about you holly um no i i didn't think that i would be a writer growing up um and i my mum was actually an author um a, a, a very different genre um and category um but uh yeah it, it didn't occur to me i i ended up going into fields where I was working with writers, um, mainly screenwriters, and I really loved that aspect of things, uh, but there was a lot of me going, oh wow, these people are amazing, I, I could never uh, write something this, this good, so just not even going to try. And then um, I did NaNoWriMo um, quite a few years ago, and just really loved the experience, even though what I wrote was <laughs> um, so I just kind of kept on dabbling and then the idea for Midnight's Twins took hold of me and I was like oh, I'm just gonna give it a go um, but yeah I, I mean I'll kind of raise the elephant in the room here it's not like there's a, a dearth of middle class white cis female writers <laughs> around um, but I do think it's um, it, it feels as though maybe we're on a really interesting i'd like to think we're a really interesting kind of cusp of um becoming a more diverse uh community um of authors and hopefully as uh you guys have said that will bring in um more diverse authors of the future as well which would be a really good thing i think definitely how about you naomi um yeah, like um, Kat and Holly, I don't think it was something I knew I would do. Um, growing up with surrounded by books, I think I wanted to, but um, you know, you go to university, you just, I don't know, you just sort of get sidetracked, don't you? And um, I ended up working, well, I now work as a quantity surveyor. Um, but yeah, I think like five years ago, I was like really unhappy in my career. And I was like, well, what used to make me happy? And writing made me happy. So I started going to writing classes and that was how I found the idea for my book. Um, and it's just kind of gone from there. Um, so yeah, it's not something um, that I grew up knowing I would do, um, but I think maybe when I was younger, I wanted to, but it's just, I don't know, it's funny, isn't it? Just sometimes you just forget about things for a while, but then they come back to you. So that's what happened to me really, so. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, obviously I'm not an author, but I've kind of come back to the kind of book world recently. And I think it is like, I completely didn't think of it as like a 
thing that I could be involved in, in any aspect. So I think that's why it's so incredible lately with social media and everything and these communities forming that there's kind of a highlight of the different roles, whether it's writing or illustrating or just mm -hmm. chatting to people and being like, this book is incredible, you should read it. And um, there is so many different roles that I think, yeah, I agree. We're on the cusp. I feel like we're on the cusp of something kind of like happening and it's going to be amazing to kind of like watch develop. Um, but yeah, I suppose before we go, I have to ask, can anyone tell us or give us hints on what they are kind of working on at the moment? I know the answer is probably going to be no, but I have to try. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's start with Holly. Uh, I'm writing the third book in the trilogy, uh, Midnight, Dark and Golden. So wrapping everything up. It's weirdly emotional. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. <laughs> How about you, Kat? Um, well, I'm very, very excited to read book three in Holly's trilogy, and I'm also terrified about what she's going to do to me emotionally in that book. <laughs> um, Just calm but... a cat. <laughs> return the trauma. I know. <laughs> I know, I deserve it. Um, <laughs> For, for me, I've just finished the first draft of um, a new book that I can't really say that much about, but it won't surprise any of you to know it's another scary book. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be hopefully the most terrifying of anything that I've written. <laughs> One day, Kat, you'll I write. like how we're all like hiding behind our <laughs> <laughs> One day, Kat, you'll write a romance and we'll all be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just imagine it. Like that would be an incredible April Fools. That would be the <laughs> scariest of all, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Cat gone? Who's who's this person? Who's this Who are you there? Well, <laughs> how about um you know me? Um so I am just wrapping up edits on book two, which will be out next August. Woohoo! And um, it's uh, another sort of techie thriller. It's about a girl who has um, this secret and she starts playing this VR game and her secret follows her into the game and uh, it starts manifesting in like horrible, creepy ways. It's like a, another sort of psychological thriller with, with tech. So <laughs> Sounds amazing. <laughs> it does. It sounds really good. And oh, the second you said creepy, cat's face just flew <laughs> 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 Which is incredible. I suppose before we go, do you, all of you just want to let us know where people can find you on social media? Um, and that, that way they can interact with you directly as well and find up, out more about the books you've written. Um, shall we start with Naomi? Sure. Um, so I am at Naomi G Writes on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok for your convenience. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That was so smooth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How about you, Holly? Oh, I'm less convenient. I am at Holly underscore race on Instagram and TikTok. And I'm at Ecarillo on Twitter, which is my name spelt backwards, which I thought was really, really, you know, clever. Oh, I never when realized I that. Thought of it. And, that, and now it's just really irritating trying to explain it to everyone. <laughs> it hadn't clicked, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You're just like, oh, a random collection of letters. Yeah, I was just like, hmm. Oh, well. Um, how about you, Kat? Um, yeah, most places I am at Cat Ellis Wright, uh, except for Twitter where I'm at Lcat, E-L underscore K-A-T, because Cat Ellis Wright was apparently not something I thought of at the time when I set up my <laughs> Twitter account about 12 years ago. And um, yes, all three of us are on the UKYA Books account, which is the same on Twitter and on Instagram. Yeah, everyone needs to check it out and follow it. There's amazing content coming out of that page from kind of past releases. You can kind of go back and kind of look at to 
every single book more or less that comes out on the day being spotlighted as well which is incredible um so thank you for all the work you do it's helpful for me so i know it's helpful for a lot of other people um and thank you so much for agreeing to do this and some other things during this week which you'll have to kind of wait to find out about they are all going to be amazing we've got all of you in panels which i'm really excited for and um, so thank you for agreeing to kind of do those as well um but yeah i suppose we'll leave it at that and call it a day and yeah <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much charlie you. thank you i really appreciate it that's okay i just hope it is helpful for you all and yeah it's, it's absolutely amazing can't wait to see <laughs> all the events of, <laughs> it's been a lot of fun um tiring but so much fun i never thought when i initially kind of was like is this a good idea that it would get to where it is already so like it's very exciting to kind of see how the week is going to unfold and what can happen afterwards because i have ideas but i'm trying to not think too far <laughs> Do you, do you know I was thinking about this because I was I was looking at the questions you sent and I was thinking like um uh, you know about how great it is that you're doing this because you know YA authors like don't get a lot to be honest like Waterstones you know have like a monthly book of the month for every category except for YA um you know and that's like the biggest bookshop in the country and then you know you we have um YA LitCon, which is once a year, <laughs> and everyone goes nuts for it. And then you've got Northern YA Lit Fest up in Preston, um, which was tr starting to kick off, but then lockdown happened. So there's not, you know, there's not a lot really around for YA authors. So when a bookshop starts kicking up and screaming about it, I think it's really exciting. And I can I can totally believe that you've had people bite your hand off for it. Um, and that's why probably so many people have replied. <laughs> So it's great. <laughs> it, it was a bit overwhelming because obviously from a, like a reader's point of view, it's not, it's been getting bigger online and there's been a lot more of kind of like online kind of events and Instagram lives and stuff happening. Mm -hmm. But to actually be able to kind of connect with people and be like, this is my idea are you game to join in has really been like a bit mind blowing um because i'm just me shouting in my like <laughs> into the abyss being like we need more things because i think part of the reason i'm so passionate about it is because yes ya is for an age group i think that age group far expands the kind of step guidelines that it's given mm -hmm. and i also think that locally um and kind of further afield you see a lot of kind of authors going into schools and things but that kind of drops off as you get to those more important kind of crucial stages because i think when you're younger those are amazing experiences but i don't think they always stick with you the same way that something that an event or kind of watching an event online connects with you when you're kind of that YA age um, and I just think the books are amazing you guys and all the other YA authors are incredible so we need to shout and definitely it is slightly selfish from my point of view because <laughs> I get to talk to you all and <laughs> I also get to like shout about what I love most and obviously for me as a reader it was I think independent shops are picking up YA a lot more um, mm -hmm. and I think it's coming into kind of like waterstones and things more and um, they've got quite big sections but locally where i am there isn't a waterstones that's not like an hour or so away mm -hmm. so it's purely selfish on my part because i love going into bookshops and just 
browsing the shelves and coming out with something that's been recommended by someone there or that perhaps I hadn't seen. So getting to kind of do this week and kind of work in the shop on the kind of like YA section and stuff has been like a dream come true. So it's been very exciting um, and done for slightly selfish reasons. <laughs> I think we need more Charlies. We're very grateful. <laughs> yeah. Be selfish, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I will definitely keep going because, like, I've been having so much fun and it's so nice to just connect with other people that kind of, like, just love reading YA because I think sometimes I wish it didn't have Jung on it because I think it puts some people off. Yeah. And then I think sometimes when people are talking about YA, they use the word children's instead. So then the intended market's like, I'm not a child. It's not for me. And it's, it's just kind of like communicating that, I think, which is what I'm trying to hopefully do. So <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> but I will let you all get off and enjoy your evenings now. Um, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Just nice to see you.